Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. Bam Weather, meteorologist Brett Waltz here, and we are going to uh, go over the pattern over the next couple of weeks in today's video, uh, break down where maybe model data is not doing great and why. And part of the reason is we have a, an extremely rare setup right now in the atmosphere uh, that we really haven't seen for several decades. And we'll talk about that as we go throughout this video and what the implications are on winter weather and our winter storm track over the next several weeks will be. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanted to start out this video by just giving you all a look at our Clarity platform uh, because it's going to be very active over the next several days. And I just wanted to give you all an in-depth look at some of the forecasts uh, across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the northeastern tier of the country that are going to be dealing with winter weather the next couple of days. Uh, and of course, uh, Clarity provides location-specific forecasts for anywhere across the lower 48 parts of Canada and Mexico, and we'll go through a couple of the bigger cities and see what it's indicating as we work over the next couple of days. Uh, let's start here. Click around winter weather advisories in effect from uh, just west of Oklahoma City all the way out towards the interior northeast United States, New York City as well, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and so uh, a pretty widespread storm system setting up here. We've got dense fog advisories down to the south. Uh, if we click on our location here, guys, in Chicago, uh, we look around, we can see the forecast as we work into this evening, uh, going to be moving freezing rain and ice into the picture with sub-freezing temperatures here late this evening and into the early morning hours tomorrow. If we want to get some more details on this, we can click and see that our PaveCast tool here, uh, forecasting icy conditions, 11 p.m., and beyond that, and if we take a look at the forecast insight, this is a custom analysis that our meteorologist put out this morning. We can see the simulated radar. Things really begin to kind of ramp up here late this afternoon across parts of Iowa, and then as we work into the evening hours into northern parts of Illinois. In terms of total freezing rain expectations, we're not looking at a devastating ice storm by any means, but any type of freezing rain can cause major issues. Any kind of a glaze of ice can cause major travel issues. And once you get a tenth of an inch of ice, that's where you can uh, start to get some uh, issues with, uh, you know, tree limbs down. Probably not power lines at a tenth of an inch, but uh, certainly a, an impactful storm, uh, even though it's not going to be a, a ton of ice as we work into this evening and into tonight. If we click around a little bit more, let's go take a look at what our friends in Des Moines, Iowa are going to be dealing with. Uh, we'll automatically change our location here, and we can see uh, going to be dealing with kind of this on and off uh, ice or freezing mist threat as we go throughout the day today. We click here. Again, you can see those icy road conditions, especially towards the evening hours. We take a look at the simulated radar and the projected ice totals here, guys. You can see most of Iowa dealing with a glaze, but in this black dashed area could be the potential for some sleet and snow mixing in as well. Amounts less than a half of an inch. And again, guys, uh, this is all from our team of meteorologists that have been working diligently throughout the morning hours to put out these customized updates. If we want to look at more of a broad picture of uh, snowfall totals over the next 24 hours and the next seven days, uh, let's turn this on. We'll turn our alerts off here for a second, guys. We'll turn on the snowfall totals. Here's a look, some heavier snow up here across the northern tier of the United States, working some snow into the New York City area. And then ice, again, probably the bigger concern with this particular system. We zoom in here to parts of Pennsylvania. This is where we could get more than a quarter of an inch of some ice. But a pretty widespread area dealing with a glaze uh, to a tenth of an inch of ice over the next 24 hours. We look at the next seven days. This is where we can really see our storm track setting up. Northern jet stream to the north, providing clipper systems, some heavy snow possible across Minneapolis, across northern Wisconsin. Look at the interior northeastern United States and then out towards the east coast from Boston to Portland, Maine. You're looking at more than a foot of snow possible over the next seven days. Uh, some heavier snow possible out in New York City as well. Some of this comes at the very end of the next seven days time frame, and we will talk a little bit about that as we go throughout this video. In fact, I'm gonna to go to that next. Uh, we'll get back to the upper level pattern here in a second, but let's go to this next. This is the uh, potential for four inches or more of snow for a 24 hour period by next Tuesday into Wednesday. And I would say seven days out at this distance, this is a, a pretty solid signal for a heavy snow event for Northern Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland. This is the GEFS specifically, guys. 
Here's a look at the EPS. It's further north, but still a very strong signal for a pretty heavy accumulating snowfall event across the northeastern part of the country. The Canadian, a little bit further south, it may be the more in-between solution, but Anywhere from Washington, D.C. to New Jersey, New York City, out to Boston, Massachusetts, could be dealing with a pretty major winter storm as we work into the early to mid part of next week. Uh, based off where data has the best signal right now and the overall upper level pattern, I would say the highest threat for some heavy snow will be from Baltimore, Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia, New York City, Hartford, Connecticut, and Boston, Massachusetts. Now again, guys, six, seven days out on this, so some fluctuations in amounts, the exact track, the exact timing, certainly going to be possible, but feel confident enough at this distance that uh, we will probably deal with a, a heavy snow threat and a major winter storm across part of this region as we go into early next week. Now, going back here to the upper level pattern, uh, let's look at this, guys, and I'll zoom in here so you all can see this a little bit better uh, as we work over the next five days. Uh, the stage is being set for the colder pattern right now. You know, I really don't see any major changes in the upper level setup right now. If we take a look, guys, uh, key notes. Look at the ridge of high pressure here over Alaska, a big ridge over parts of Europe and Scandinavia. This is squeezing the polar vortex, and it will send cold air in the U.S. or into the U.S. from the Arctic. You can see basically that flow right in here. We also will have some cold air down into parts of Asia as well. Now, we still have a southeast ridge, guys, uh, and this will lead to an active storm track, a really notable clashing of air masses possible here as we work into the middle part of the month as we continue to go through note how the high pressure over the arctic just continues to amplify with time uh, this is an extremely strong what we call negative arctic oscillation and negative north atlantic oscillation basically measuring warmth and high pressure over the arctic ocean and over greenland when we get a lot of high pressure up in these regions, guys, it tends to force the coldest air on the planet down to the south. And that's exactly what's happening. We can see two lobes of the tropospheric polar vortex, one right here over the Hudson Bay, and then another one over here into Asia, which means that any storm system will be able to tap into this cold air, and it will likely pull in cold air behind the storms. Now, one particular difference that I think is key here right now compared to what we dealt with in january is what's going on in the pacific northwest in january we had more uh, of a ridge of high pressure in this area which forced the coldest air down into the southeast u.s it's the opposite in february it's more la nina like we have colder air kind of bottled up here across the pacific northwest which allows for the southeastern u.s warmth and ridge this is really a perfect setup for a very active pattern across the central and eastern part of the country. And, you know, I still think with this type of a setup, even with the southeast ridge, we are already seeing it late next week. The opportunities are going to be there for the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the northeastern part of the country, the mid-Atlantic, to see some, some pretty big winter storms. And, and again, I attribute a lot of that to this AO. Um, in fact, this is dipping towards uh, some of the most negative values that we've seen in February uh, since back in, in 2021. And I, I think that the month of February as a whole could be one of the most negative AO months that we've had in the past two to three decades or so, uh, especially when you factor in the negative NAO as well, that ridge over Greenland. We haven't had a negative NAO consistently in February since 2013. It has been more than a decade since we have seen this type of a setup. Now, I went back even further. We have not seen a negative NAO, a negative AO, all this high pressure over the Arctic and Greenland, and a negative PNA, the colder air in Western North America. We haven't seen that combination uh, at this intensity, at least. These are all very strong signals right now. We haven't seen a combination with this intensity since 1969. And so the setup right now, guys, is exceedingly rare. We just haven't had a lot of this in recent memory. And so, you know, going to be very difficult to compare one year precisely to this upcoming year. I can tell you that looking at some of the years that had a little bit of the blocking with a negative PNA, 2021 is one of them, 1985 is one of them. They're probably both underdone with that southeast warmth. 
But you can see uh, both of these years had some notable cold air across the central part of the country. If we take a look at the 10 to 15 day on the EPS, given those years and given the amount of high pressure we have over the, over the Arctic Ocean, I would argue that this model is not cold enough and the GEFS as well. You know, I do think there's still some warmth south and east, but I would make the argument that we could see colder trends, um, especially across this region in here. I think that some of this colder air could surge a little bit further south and east than currently modeled. Still warmth in the southeast, guys. Don't get me wrong there. And it will set up an active storm track through this region. But I, I just wouldn't be shocked, given recent years that had high latitude blocking, if we got a little bit colder. Interestingly enough, the NAFIS, which is uh, more of a bias corrected uh, blend of different ensemble models, it's the North American forecast system, it is a little bit colder. Now, no, this isn't, a, you know, these aren't actual anomalies, but it gives you the probability of above and below normal, and this is a decent signal. Has the core of the coldest Pacific Northwest Canadian prairies, northern plains? I don't disagree with that. But it does bleed the colder than normal temperatures further south and east, which I agree with. Given that, I do think the probability for above normal snow potential can come further southeast than what some of the ensemble data has in the extended range right now. Specifically, the 10 to 15 day on the latest EPS and the GEFS. I think that they're just a little too warm and they're probably not snowy enough. Now, I do want to circle an area. This particular region from Des Moines to Tulsa to Indy, St. Louis, Louisville. This is an area I think is big, boom, or bust. And I think that's just related to the to the storm track. You're either going to have a, a northern clipper type of storm track where you could get some decent snow events through here. Then you're going to have that southern stream that brings activity through this region. And, and there's just the risk that this area could either get a nice phase storm and a big snowstorm similar to what 2021 did near Valentine's Day. I think we're probably a little later this year. Or you're in a little bit more of a snow hole. Um, it, it's just there's no way to know for sure at this distance. I think the chances are above normal, but I wouldn't say I'm as confident in as areas in the northeast of being much above normal based off the signals I see right now. Looking into this a little bit deeper, here's a look at the extended range GEFS, the 35-day GEFS, for day 11 to 25 out through the end of the month. You know, I really don't disagree with this type of a look. In fact, if you compare this to what our analogs were yesterday for basically the same time frame, really doesn't get any closer. This is a pretty much a direct match for this period. Well, what does that mean in terms of snow potential? You take a look at the ensemble for the next 35 days. Guys, this is an aggressive signal. This is a really, really aggressive signal for snow, especially across the Northeast U.S., guys. I mean, this is one of the more aggressive Northeast U.S. snow signals that I've seen in seven years of doing this, just to be completely honest. I, I mean, this is a really aggressive signal for snow in the northeastern part of the country, but it's active everywhere. I mean, it gives good snow for most of the northern U.S., Midwest, and the Ohio Valley. If we want to, want to get a little bit more nitty-gritty with this, here's the GEFS control. So instead of blending all the models together, it's just kind of the main model, if you will. What you'll see, again, is it's very active. You have your very active northern jet stream. Take a look at the Pac Northwest as well. Very active out there. You have big phase systems in the northeast. And then your question mark areas, again, your boom or bust areas right kind of through this region. And so, you know, very high confidence of above normal snow in the Northeast. I think that there's above normal opportunities for snow in this area that I have circled, but confidence is just a little bit lower because it is a big boom or bust scenario. So guys, that's all that I have for today's forecast. I'll leave you with, uh, with this outlook here in terms of the medium range snowfall risk. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching.